Welcome to another how-to with Foztech. Today I will be showing you how to use Autodesk's Fusion 360 with an other mill mini CNC machine to cut 3D shapes. The other mill is awesome right out of the box for cutting 2.5D images and etching different items, but to get full use out of the device, we will need to be able to convert 3D models into G-code that will allow the other mill to cut 3D shapes out of whatever material we choose. We have already made our model in Fusion 360, so the first thing we are going to do is switch over to Cam mode by clicking on Model on the toolbar and choosing Cam from the drop-down menu. Next, click on Setup and a dialog box will pop up on the right side of the screen. Click Orientation and select the option that says Select Z-axis slash Plane and X-axis. Next, we need to select a line that can serve as a guide for our Z-axis. Choose a vertical line like one of the corners of our model. We'll choose another line to act as our X-axis and you can see the axes change direction with the colored arrows. Next we need to generate a roughing pass. Click the down arrow on the 3D button on the toolbar. There are two options for roughing passes, adaptive clearing and pocket clearing. By hovering over each option, Fusion 360 will show a description of each so you can choose the best option. We're going to choose pocket clearing for this model and a dialog box will pop up on the right. The first tab is the tool tab. Choose the first box that says select. Select the new mill tool button on the bottom left. A new dialog box will pop up where you can enter the information. In the General tab, set Coolant to Disabled and Material to HSS or High Strength Steel. In the Cutter tab, you'll need to measure each dimension of your bit with calipers and enter the information. I actually entered all of these values previously in a different file, so I don't have to change them again, but I wanted to show the interface. Feed and speed is important, so we will change some of the values here. These values reflect the quarter inch plywood stock material that we will be cutting. Take a look at the settings I used for the appropriate tabs. These pictures can also be found in the instructable I wrote as well. Hit the OK button, then move over to the geometry tab on the original dialog box. We'll type in 2 to the additional offset box so that our part will be cut completely out of the stock material. Click the clearance tab. These values were originally 10 millimeters for clearance height and 10 millimeters for retract height by default. We're going to lower these two values to 5 millimeters and 2 millimeters. This will decrease how much the cutting head retracts and therefore lower our total job time. Click over to the passes tab. Here the step over is set to 0.76 millimeters, which is just slightly less than the diameter of our milling bit, and so it's a great value for a roughing pass. We can ignore the last remaining linking tab. Hit the OK button at the bottom, wait a second for it to render, and we can see the tool paths we just generated. Click on the simulate button on the toolbar and hit play to watch the cutting tool virtually move through the paths we just generated. Next we will look at the smoothing paths. I chose a spiral smoothing pass pattern for this piece, but parallel passes are easily the most reliable from what I've experienced. Again, Fusion 360 will give you a description of what each of the nine smoothing pass options are best for. In the Tool tab of the Smoothing Pass dialog box, the appropriate tool should already be chosen. There shouldn't need to be any offset in the Geometry tab. In the Clearance tab, we'll want to lower the clearance and retract values just like we did last time. In the Passes tab, we'll want the step over to be very small so that a smooth surface can be achieved. 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters is a pretty safe bet. Because I chose a spiral pattern, I needed to increase the radius to cover the entire piece. Using other smoothing pass patterns, it wouldn't be necessary. Right click on setup on the left side of the screen and select post process. In the dialog box that pops up, select othermill.cps under post configuration. Select the file path where you'd like to save the file next. Click post in the bottom right to save the file. Use whatever means you desire to get the file over to a Mac so that we can move on. In other plan, select Setup Material in the upper right, then enter the dimensions of your stock material. I'm using a section of quarter inch thick wooden paint stirrer for testing, so I'll enter the dimensions of that. Next, we're going to select our file and drag it into other plan. Click the placement button and enter values to position your jaw on the stock material. Next, we will choose Home, then Start Cutting. 
We can see the machine start to move and cut in the software so that it can be monitored. However, I'd recommend not leaving your other mill alone while it's cutting. Now you can sit back, relax, and let the other mill cut out your piece. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel to get free updates on all of my how-to, DIY, and maker videos. Leave a comment telling me about something awesome you want to make using an other mill. For more information, check out the Instructable for this video. There's a link in the description. While you're at it, take a look at some of my other projects on Instructables and visit my Facebook fan page for more frequent updates. I even have a Pinterest channel as well if that interests you. Thank you so much for watching. Keep building, and I will see you next time.